by the progressives who work for George Soros' front companies. New Year's Eve is looming. Another black hole. I can't wait till that's over. Uh, thank God the holidays are almost over. I, I can't wait for them to be done. Back to normal. Don't tell me you're having a good time on vacation. I love it. Where are you on vacation? What are you doing? They can't wait to get back to work, most men. The guys who took off from radio, they're listening to me because they're, they're monitoring. They feel like they're falling behind. Their wives, the children, yeah, yeah, we're with family the whole week. Yeah, can't wait to. Yeah. They ran back to the house or the car somewhere to listen to the only one broadcasting today, me, who's not on vacation, because I don't want to be on vacation. I have uh, home studios wherever I go on vacation, which is nowhere. I have a home studio now in Beverly Hills because I have family here. I'm probably going to spend a little time down here getting away from the sickness of San Francisco, the illness, the illness, the illness. The illness is so overwhelming. The illness of progressivism is like a disease, a seeping, insane disease that gets worse by the day. But I love the city, and I love the mountains, and I love the bay. I love the birds, and I love the bees, and they're not going to drive me out. It's mine as much as theirs. 30% of the people who live in the Bay Area are conservatives, by the way, who have zero representation. And, you know, the same is true in many metropolitan areas that have been invaded by uh, uh, immigrants. 30% of the population, generally the hardest working, the tax-paying part of the population, hate the governments that have taken over these cities, hate them, and they have zero representation. I wouldn't mind if there was a progressive element of a government, but there's no other element of governments in San Francisco or New York uh, uh, City or so many other liberal bastions of insanity where welfare states are growing like cancer. You look at Hawaii. Let's take a look at Hawaii, for example, to show you how sick a place can get. The birthplace of our dear president. There was a governor, Neil Abercrombie. He was as liberal as they come, a friend of Obama, progressive his whole life, played the union card very well, became governor, and then he made a mistake. He was running for governor again, and he dared say to the unions, you have to rein in your pensions because we can't afford it. They destroyed him. They destroyed him. The unions are controlling the state of Hawaii. The unions control the state of California. That's how a man as crazy as Jerry Brown, as incompetent as Jerry Brown, could become governor again. Because the unions wanted a stooge in Sacramento who does nothing to control their pensions and their demands. So you say, how does this end? I don't know how it ends. You run out of other people's money, I suppose. You keep printing it and stealing it from the hardworking people until eventually there's no one left to rob from. I don't know. I don't know how it ends. So there were a lot of problems, and I don't know that they're all soluble. I really don't. And I think, therefore, that is why I focus on, to me, if you take all the problems that are facing America, you can't deal with all of them. You can go crazy from it. So what you have to do is focus on the most important. And to me, that's national security. Obama gets less than zero on national security. He has failed us utterly. He has decimated the military. Read Government Zero. I document it. I name the officers who he fired, who he drove out of the military. I go through every department in this country in Government Zero. I don't expect the book suddenly to become a raging bestseller again because I mentioned it. There is no better documentation for what Obama has done to this country than my masterpiece, Government Zero. None. The book is a classic of information with references to every statement. For whatever it's worth, if you really want to know what he's done and what he's doing and what he might do before he's out of office, if he ever does leave office, a big question mark, um, you can check it out in Government Zero. So the number one issue is national security. He did nothing against the Islamic State until Russia finally showed him up for what he really was, and now all of a sudden he's Mr. Mr. You know, Commander-in-Chief. So we open the show talking about the despicable, the despicable rules uh, that ISIS put out on how to treat slaves, sex slaves, a rape handbook. Not one word from any of the fraudulent women's groups in America. You know, you know if you listen to the show long enough that I'm a sexual libertarian. I've said that for 10 years because it's true. I don't care what people do with each other as long as it's consensual, sexually now, and there are no children involved. In that sense, I'm a sexual libertarian. It's not for me to judge you, and you're not to judge me. However, I don't understand how gay women or lesbians, if you want to put it, I don't know what the, the proper term is. 
are not up in arms screaming about the rape handbook. I don't know how they cannot go crazy over this. I guess I, I just ask for too much from people. 40% of Americans say the terrorists are winning. No kidding. Yeah, Americans. What do they know? Hey, what there? Huh? What terrorists? Huh? Send where? Send who they know? All I know is what? Uh, Hollywood and then baseball. and 40% of Americans say the terrorists are winning. 40 as what? If people with a brain, 100% know that we're losing. Because uh, old Barry, old Barry boy. 17% of Americans say they have a great deal of confidence that President O can protect the nation. While 20% say they have not much confidence in O, and 30% say they have none at all in President O. Are you joking? Why don't you ask this question? Do you think the president should be impeached now or f seven years ago? Okay, let's do it this way. When do you think President Obama should be impeached? Now? A year ago, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, or seven years ago? Seven years ago? Okay. Make that the poll. See what the answers are. 10% say seven years ago, 20% say six years ago, 30% say five years ago. You want a poll? That's, by the way, that's a CNN ORC poll, foreign poll. 40% say the terrorists are winning. Are you joking? Ask the guys on the front line who is winning and why we are losing. Ask them. Ask the brave men who risk their lives every day, whether it's here in America, taking down the vermin, taking them down on highways all across America as they're transporting weapons, ammunition, hate literature. Ask the cops who are pulling them in whether we're winning the war while, while Schmendrick is in Hawaii doing curls and playing golf. I saw an article, new strain of super gonorrhea puts disease at risk of becoming untreatable, Dr. Warns. Gonorrhea is at risk of becoming an untreatable disease, due to the continuing emergence of antimicrobial resistance, says the doc. All right, so. All of the cases occurred in heterosexual patients from, the northern, from northern England. But some patients reported partners in other parts of the country. I love the word partner. In my day, a partner meant someone in business with you. I call someone your partner. I'm going to be partner. Now, that's like a new word. It came out of the gay community, partner. You can't say husband or wife. It's to uh, partner. Gonorrhea is the second most prevalent bacterial sexually transmitted infection that is required to be reported with chlamydia being the first. Well, hey, I'm sorry. The CDC has to change those rules. You shouldn't have to report any disease. I think it's discriminatory to have to report any disease at all. I would say disband the CDC and eliminate reporting on any disease. You'd be in the same position we're in now. But here's the question. What's more untreatable, super gonorrhea or radical Islam? No, I, it's, it's actually, what does one thing have to do with the other? Well, they don't really. But it says new strain of super gonorrhea puts disease at risk of becoming untreatable. So I asked myself a question. What's more untreatable, super gonorrhea or radical Islam? Because right now with Dr. Obama in office, it looks to me like radical Islam's winning, like it's untreatable. Why? Because he won't use the antibiotics that we have. They're called cluster bombs. They're called bunker-busting bombs. They're called cruise missiles. There's an awful lot of medicine that old Dr. O is not using against the gonorrhea of our time, the human gonorrhea. The gonococci in head scarves. That has a rich flavor to it, doesn't it? Oh, and you don't want to offend anyone's religion, do you? You want it to blow up your child's school? No, well, no, I don't really want that either, but I think you're being overly harsh. Your language is a little too harsh. Why don't you speak in measured tones, like everyone on television? Speak in measured tones, like on Fox News, where they're very polite, although I don't agree with them. Uh, when they discuss these things, it's done very politely. That's why we're losing the war, you moron, because we don't need polite. You want me to start screaming and yelling and pounding the table? I can do that, too. I'll be right back. Local San Francisco story. French tourists mugged on SF's Twin Peaks. Three French tourists snapping photos on a Twin Peaks hill were robbed of their passports, cameras, and money. Officials said Tuesday. Ha! You know, the difference between an official and an unofficial in San Francisco is, you know what? One of the victims, an 81-year-old man, was shoved to the ground, lost consciousness. 
Three victims and a witness told authorities there were two male suspects. Authorities were looking for the suspects. Of course, there's no descriptions of the suspects in San Francisco. It is free of suspects unless they're white males who are Christian and wearing a cross who love Donald Trump in America. In San Francisco, everyone else is a victim. But we pretty much know who the criminals were, don't we? We pretty much know who they were. No, they're not ISIS, that's for sure. They're busy raping eight-year-old girls. While the phony American and Western women's movement, which doesn't exist at all except to attack white heterosexual Christian males, says virtually nothing about the slaves, slave markets, kidnapping, rape of eight-year-old girls by these vermin in the Islamic State. We'll talk about that in a minute. In addition to the wave of refugees, which is really an organized invasion being conducted by George Soros and his puppet, Donald Obama. But I want to talk about something else, which is the race warfare that Obama has sparked in America, which is spreading like a retrovirus, invading and destroying our defense cells, and autoimmune disease is less to fear than Barack Obama. Headline, black professor chastises white Americans saying, admit to the racist poison inside of you. Now, how could a professor say a thing like that unless he felt empowered by the chief racist in the White House? A so-called Emory University professor wrote an open letter which was published by the morons in the New York Times. Some professor of philosophy, George Yancey, a real genius. Another one. You know, in America, anyone could be a professor, as you well know, especially if they're a minority. Then right away, they're a philosophy professor. So this moron writes a letter called Dear White America, and he called his letter a gift to white people. As you read this letter, he said, take a deep breath, make a space, blah, 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 blah. He says he's failed women, and so he now wants white people to admit that they're racists. He says it's painful to let go of your white innocence to use this letter as a mirror, one that refuses to show you what you want to see, blah, blah, blah. Responsibility for those who live under the yoke of whiteness. Of course, the yoke of whiteness has permitted a loser like him to become a professor. The yoke of whiteness permits a loser like him with a low IQ to even call himself a professor. That's the yoke of whiteness. So he writes, I'm asking you to enter into battle with your white self. I'm asking that you open yourself up, speak to admit to the racist poison that is inside of you. Mr. Yancey, the philosophy professor, went on to claim that all white people are part of a racist system. And he goes on to tell you to touch your child's hair tonight and understand that your child is also fundamentally a racist because they're white. Now, we would dismiss this as something coming out of Hitler's Germany in reverse, which means it's the same thing as the racism. The racism that Hitler's minions put out against Jews, Slavs, and others is equivalent to what this racist black professor is saying about white people. Do you get what I just said to you? Do you understand how sick the country has become under Dr. Obama, who is like a maniac doctor, who tells everyone to look for the racist inside of themselves and turn it on white people? Savage.